Hi, this is the Bill Sang Podcast. I am Bill Sang, and this is a very special episode that we're recording right now. Uh, this week, uh, one of my all-time favorite heroes, uh, within my lifetime at least, uh, has passed away, uh, Rush Limbaugh. And he was a guy who's been a part of my life for quite some time. I remember the first time that I heard Rush was when I was six years old, uh, riding in the car with my mom. And uh, I remember that they had this parody. I don't remember what the parody was, and that's something that his show was really well known for, was the comedy, the parodies, the songs they played were a lot of fun, very upbeat, uplifting, and just made fun of the right thing at the right time. And I don't even really think that I understood what the parody was about. I just laughed because the funny voices, and, and uh, my mom laughed too, so that helped, and so I just thought it was funny. and. They made fun of the people's names and voices and all of that fun stuff. So, uh, and that that from that moment I was hooked. Uh, and I'm 36 years old now. That's when I was six years old. So 30 years listening uh, to Rush Limbaugh. Um, and uh, what I really appreciate about Rush, um, uh, probably above anything else, is that he was nothing that anybody in the mainstream uh, said that he was. Uh, you probably have heard the mantras that have been used about them, so I'm not going to repeat what others have said about him, uh, because again, the things you've heard are probably wrong uh, about Rush. Uh, as somebody who's been a lifelong listener to him, uh, what I really liked about him was his ability to create original thoughts and uh, to, um, uh, here, I, I, I'll talk about this for a little bit. Um, as I was talking to my wife not too long ago, about it, um, that being that uh, what, one of the things that was always said about the people that listened to Rush is they would tune into Rush to hear what it is that they need to be thinking. So basically, Rush was giving marching orders, they thought, to his audience. But what he was perceptive enough to understand and what um, also the listeners understood as well is that Rush wasn't telling anybody what to think at all. But what Rush did is he echoed the voice of the common person where the mainstream would be talking about all these radical ideas that nobody, no common person could relate to. Rush Limbaugh was the voice of reason, talking about good family values, talking about capitalism, talking about faith. And uh, when people would tune in and hear this guy, Rush Limbaugh, talking about the things that are most dear to them, they would hear it, they would listen, they would laugh, they would enjoy it. And uh, when then they tune into their uh, late night news shows and be told about how wrong and unintelligent and uh, misled that they are. So naturally, why is it the Rush had, I don't know, like 30 plus million listeners by the time of his death? Because he appealed to the common person and that we knew that we could trust him to tell the truth. Something my wife and I particularly appreciated about Rush Limbaugh was how he was a strong uh, advocate of homeschooling, that he praised people that took the time to teach their children at home. And I remember uh, that he said that homeschooling parents are a godsend, that they are going to be the people to save our country. And it's not hard to imagine that because Rush is an advocate for free thought and he wants people to learn how to think for themselves. And he saw homeschooling as being a way to be able to achieve that. Uh, and as you know, he wrote a bunch of children's books. And honestly, of everything that he's done, as great as his radio show has been, I think that these, uh, that these children's book, children books that he wrote is going to be his legacy because they're going to be in, 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 in homeschool classrooms across America. They're full of America's true history, uh, you know, adding on top of that, a time traveling horse with a, a man named Rush Revere that bears a very close resemblance to Rush himself. Um, but we just really love about him that he saw the value in parents taking their time to invest into their children to truly bring up uh, the next generation. One of the things that he would talk about would be that saying, that old saying that it takes a village to raise a child, but he didn't say that. He said it takes parents to raise children. And that is the truth. And I think that when we take that role seriously, 
that we really are investing in the future of America. In 2008, Rush Limbaugh gave a speech at CPAC, which is a conservative convention, um, and uh, it was right after, well, actually it had been 2009, it was right after Barack Obama uh, won the presidential election against John McCain. So I think that everybody was kind of anticipating that Rush's speech at CPAC, and it was his first one, um, was going to be dark, dismal, scathing toward Obama and his administration. And yet when he got on stage, he came up full of energy, positive. He said that our best days are ahead of us. And uh, I remember that he really articulated what conservatism was all about. That he said that conservatives, we love people, that we don't break people into categories and turn them against each other. We want to see everybody do good for themselves. We want everybody to succeed and make the most out of their lives or just do whatever they want to with their lives. Even though we want everybody to succeed, uh, we just want people to be happy with their lives ultimately. Um, and I remember after hearing all the things that he had to say in C CPAC, and actually I even recorded this speech, I listened to it periodically from time to time. I believe it's one of the greatest political speeches of all time, definitely inside of my generation. Um, and uh, uh, I, I just remember saying out loud that Russia's voice was the voice of America. Because I really believed that it represented the values that America was founded upon. Now, even though that was imp as impactful on me as it was, it wasn't quite enough to bring me back to becoming a regular listener. Don't ask me why that's... Just one of those weird things that it just didn't hook me at that time. Uh, but what did was uh, a, just a little bit into Obama's uh, first term, there was this pinprick oil leak, I believe it was in the Gulf of Mexico. And the scientists, other politicians, the mainstream media were all a flutter about this catastrophe in the Gulf of Mexico. They said that the oil being poured into it was going to be a generational problem. Uh, it was going to have environmental effects, uh, effects that lasted for decades, and that it would be something that we might not in our lifetimes uh, see ultimately healed, uh, and that it would take future generations to fix the problem that this pinprick leak had caused in the Gulf of Mexico. But uh, Rush got on his show, and he said that, don't these scientists know that the ocean is just going to eat this stuff up? It, and he uh, explained that the ocean is just so big, so massive, that our minds can't really grasp it. We just think about it as a bunch of water. And yet, he said that this problem wasn't going to last very long, and I believe he gave it a time frame of about two weeks. He said two weeks, and the oil will be gone. And... Uh, other conservative commentators, myself, uh, and of course the mainstream media and, uh, and other politicians um, thought that his words were ridiculous, were crazy, ludicrous. And what scientific basis does he have to say this on? And yet, two weeks later, there was a scientific art article that came out uh, that asked the question, where did all the oil go? What happened to it all? And then Rush got on his program and he told him where it all went. He replayed the clip that he made about two weeks before that and said that I predicted this. I knew this was going to happen. I don't know why, but people couldn't figure it out. And when I heard him talk about that, he gained incredible credibility in my mind because the voice of the common man won out. And that's why people loved Rush. Again, I think I said it once already, I'll say it again, that we didn't tune in to hear him tell us what to think. We tuned in because we heard that there was actually somebody in the media who was willing to articulate what we believe and that he was willing to stand up for the values that we believe in. And the rest of the mainstream would spend their time mocking uh, the most commonly held beliefs and cherished beliefs inside of our country and inside of uh, my faith and 
most likely your faith as well. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I think that gets overlooked about Rush is his incredible intellect. Uh, I have told people this past week in discussing uh, Rush Limbaugh that I, I believe that he was really had the mind of somebody like C.S. Lewis or G.K. Chesterton or think of your favorite historic philosopher um, and his mind was right up there with every single one of them. Uh, he has uh, he wrote two books in the 90s. I don't recall what the second one was, but the first one was called uh, uh, The Way Things Ought to Be. And I remember reading that book and just being blown away. And as somebody who's been to seminary, who studies the Bible regularly, he actually taught me a thing about theology even inside of it. Something I didn't expect to happen. And it's actually in relation to uh, environmentalism. Um, and he talked about how the earth was designed not to be delicate, not to be fragile, but to be strong, robust, uh, that it can bounce back. It's resilient. Um, and so to think that mankind could destroy it is arrogant. And yet that, that seems to be the mainstream narrative that we believe that we can just destroy the earth at the drop of a pen or a soda can, if you want to be a little bit more literal about it. Um, and yet Rush uh, advocated for this idea that because God designed the earth to be inhabited by people and they knew about technology, he knew about the eventual ills of people, that he designed the earth to be able to last long enough for him to be able to bring his purposes to a conclusion. And so, uh, man, what am I going to do without Rush on the radio now? I, I, I wish I could tell you for sure. He's, there's definitely going to be a void between noon and, uh, and three on the radio. And I know that millions of people across the country are going to miss Rush Limbaugh. I'm definitely going to miss Rush Limbaugh. I, I love hearing the memorial episodes that are going on right now. Um, and uh, just, just hearing the guy's voice is so uplifting. And hearing it at full strength again because of the last couple of days. And that's one, one last thing I'm going to comment on. Rush never weighed people down with his own personal grievances. The things going on in his life that the audience really didn't need to know about. And uh, this stage four cancer was no exception. It was the most exceptional of, of, of the things going on in his life. He had to tell everybody about it. So he did. Um, but, uh, just to give you an idea, every day he came to work on the radio, full strength, full of energy, as much, he gave a hundred percent every time. And, um, his last day on the radio was February 2nd, 2021. And he passed away, um, on Ash Wednesday, which would have been, uh, February 17th, 2021. So all the way up stage four lung cancer. Uh, this man's job was to to speak for basically three hours straight, and he he made sure that the show was the best, and not just for himself. He made sure that it was best for his audience to be able to enjoy. And uh, it's it's a uh, he always would talk about how he was on the golden EIB microphone uh, in down in Florida or wherever it was that he was broadcasting out of. And I, I loved one of my favorite Rush opening statements was talent on loan from God. And it had to be God because <laughs> he liked the reverence, the reverence sound and the powerful sound to how he pronounced it. And uh, this golden EIB microphone, I can only imagine, and his talent on loan from God has been called back up to God's heavenly kingdom as he had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And uh, now his golden EIB mic is up there with him in heaven, and the Lord is having him uh, broadcast through the airwaves of his heavenly kingdom, serving his purposes up there. We're gonna miss Rush. We're gonna miss Rush. I, I we all love Rush, and uh, we're we're um, just gonna be praying for him and his family. And I, I appreciate you're able to join me for today's episode. This is the Bill Same broadcast, and I am Bill Same.